In this video, Kevin and I are going to be talking about the movies and TV shows that we watched during the month of February. Just a warning, I have a feeling this is going to be a longer video. It might not be, but I have a feeling it's going to be. Because how much you talk. It, well, <laughs> <laughs> well then we were assured it's going to be a long video. <laughs> no, there's a lot to talk about. Do we do watch a lot? Uh, we watched a lot for it to be a few days shorter. Well, uh, you know. We did binge some of those shows. We did. So you're going to find out. Okay, so the first thing we watched American Nightmare. It, it came out 2024. It is a three episode mini series on Netflix. And it is about this home invasion and kidnapping and the police the police just mess everything up it's uh it's just like watching uh, train wreck. uh yeah they literally like like these people had this home invasion and this kidnapping and the evidence is all there all the evidence is in the room and they didn't use any of it mm -hmm. the police didn't instead they wanted to blame the boyfriend uh for the 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 girlfriend being kidnapped and i mean it was just uh, it's it was interesting. It was very interesting. It's not and one it's, of these... It's only three episodes, so it's not like you're investing tons of time into it. Exactly. And it's not one of these, like, true crime where it's, mm -hmm. like, really disturbing. I mean, yes, what happened shouldn't have happened. It was horrible, and it is disturbing. But it's not on the level of some other ones yeah. that we've seen. So I think that, um, like, this one won't give you nightmares. So uh, I, don't, right. yeah, well, I don't. Well, it, it didn't give me nightmares, and I'm I think I'm sensitive. No. So um, then Andrew, our son Andrew, recommended we watch this movie called Lucky Number Seven. It is from 2006. It's available on Amazon Prime Video, Freebie, Paramount Plus. You can watch this movie. It stars uh, Josh Hartnett, who he's in Oppenheimer and a bunch of other things. Morgan Freeman, Ben Kingsley, Bruce Willis. It's about basically mistaken identity. Mm -hmm. It's mistaken identity and there are some twists and some turns and Andrew just loves this movie. It was good. Um, I, I like the I like the twists in it. So yeah. yeah, it is not Can't really tell you much about it because no. we don't want to give it away, but it's not family friendly. No. I can tell you that. Um so uh, not one that you can watch. I don't think there's any nudity, but there's yes. some was there nudity? Yes. That's why I'm saying it's not twice. There's two scenes. I can't think of it. Oh, well, I'm not going to go into any detail. Because <laughs> if I gave you detail, you'd remember for sure. I just know there was some killing in there. So. Nope, not killing. Not th nothing to do with Don't killing. Um, okay, then we watched... Uh-huh. Vaguely, I remember. I'm surprised you... I don't remember that. The beekeeper. I don't store that kind of information in my brain long term. I think you would have as a as a young adult. <laughs> as a teenager. <laughs> as a teenager, you store that for later use. But now, now he doesn't need it. Okay. The beekeeper, 2024. You can rent it on Amazon Prime. Mm -hmm. That or, was a surprising one. Or you can see it in the theater. Mm -hmm. um, this, I don't know how much I can tell. This woman loses a lot of money through a phone scam mm -hmm. and the beekeeper did i write down his name i didn't i think it's jay jason statham that's yeah. his name he basically goes after these people yeah. that were in charge of the phone scam that's what I can tell you. Yeah. It was and good. It was a good action movie. It, it, yeah, it's an action movie. It's not the best movie ever. It's not. What do they call like, it? Vigilante. He's basically being a vigilante. Yes, yes, he's yes. Uh, he is the one with the doing the vengeance for sure. Mm -hmm. um, it, I like a good action movie. Yeah. It was and, worth watching once for sure. And I thought it was a good action yeah. movie. I don't know if I'd watch it more than once, but it was worth definitely watching once. Um. I would watch it again versus another one on this list, but I'll, we'll get there in a minute. Okay, um, as far as new movies that are at the theater right now, um, we watched True Detective. There are four seasons on Max. 
we watched all four seasons. We watched That's one. That's what we binged. <laughs> yes, we watched one Sometimes right we after watched another. two in a, in a night. In a night, yes. Two in a night because we really liked it. So, the, I'm going to go through the seasons for you. Season one starred Matthew McConaughey and Woody Harrelson. And at the end, after we talk about all four seasons, we can talk about which one was our favorite. Okay. okay. So, season one, Matthew McConaughey and Woody Harrelson... They are recapping one of their old cases. They were police officers or detectives, and they're recapping one of their old cases that they had back in their younger days on uh, the police force. And it was unsolved. A, an unsolved case. Yeah. At the very beginning, they show where this murder has taken place. And Matthew McConaughey and Woody Harrelson are the, the guys that are on the scene to take care of it. Um, I thought it was excellent. I yeah, thought it was fascinating. Really good. Yeah, really, really solid I can honestly season. say all four of them are good. This was a really solid season that it was straightforward. It didn't have a lot of, um, it didn't have a lot of other stuff going on like the next one. Season two, to me, was a cluster. It was Colin Farrell, Rachel McAdams, and Taylor Kitsch. Um, and what happens is there is a this odd murder that happens in Vinci, California or something. And these three people, the two uh, men and the woman, are from different police departments. And they come together from three different police departments to try to solve this murder. Mm -hmm. For me personally, it also had that other guy in it. Uh, the, he's I can't, the dark-haired guy. I can't think of the name. It doesn't matter. But. For me, this season two, there was way too much going on. There was way too many people. There were way too many subplots going yeah, on. They tried to make it too complicated. They, instead of it taking the time to explain things they would assume that you knew things had happened that they didn't necessarily say had happened. Like somebody moves. Somebody moves house during the season. Well, they don't necessarily tell you that he's moved. Or they just have boxes in her. They just so show boxes in this new place. I'm like, what happened to the old place? Oh, he had to move to the new Oh, that's right, because he lost his money, you know. So they assume that you know that you're realizing, oh, he moved. But it's like, well, what if you didn't catch on to that? There was just a lot going on in season two um, that I, it was way too much going on for me. Season And it really wasn't a true crime, if you ask me. It really no. wasn't the same as the first season. It was not the same as the first season. Yeah, the, the goal of it was completely different. To me, the first season one set the standard to what the other ones should follow. Yeah. They should have followed that pattern, and they did not. Right. Uh, so season three, I'm not going to say this name correctly, Mahershala Ali, he played in Hidden Figures, and then you had Carmen... Jello played in your honor, and then Stephen Dorff. Uh, this is uh, the disappearance of a young brother and sister leads to a frantic search, uh, which will haunt one detective for the rest of his life. Literally. So, the very beginning of the season three, there is a little uh, a boy and a girl. And basically, they ask their dad if they can go somewhere. He's working on the car out front. And they say, can we go to so-and-so's house? He says, yes, but be back by dark, something like that. They take off on their bikes. They never come home. That's what that season's yep. about. I thoroughly More enjoyed true crime. that. I, yes, thoroughly enjoyed it. We're back on track now for yeah. the for the true detective. It, it, yeah. The only time it really got confusing was sometimes it would jump back and forth between modern day the and time, back yeah. then. It was pretty self-explanatory. You knew kind of when it was shifting because the people looked different, you know, and the things looked different. Right. Cars and stuff looked different. Right. So you pretty much knew when they were going back and forth. There's a couple of times it was like, oh, okay, they're they're in the present. But, you know, that was right. the only confusing thing about it. And then season four, and they have been renewed for a fifth season, by the yeah. way. We don't know when that'll come, but they, but, uh, they have. Season four is Jodie Foster, Callie Reese, 
and Fiona Shaw. Fiona Shaw was Aunt Petunia in the Harry Potter movie. She was also in Killing Eve. She was in Baptiste, if you ever watched that show. She's in a lot of stuff, though. She's, you, you see her face, and you're like, oh, I've, I've seen her and everything. Um, <clears throat> but it says, in Ennis, Alaska, the men that operate a research station vanish. To solve the case, Chief Danvers and Navarro will have to confront the darkness themselves and dig into the haunted truth, truths that lie buried under the eternal ice. Um, I liked this season. I like this. If you take away what I know you're thinking about, if you take away that part and you just concentrate on the story, I like the story. I liked how it played out and the disappearance of these guys and they're trying to figure out what happened to them. So like, I like that part of it. I do too. It just however, went into, it did other weird stuff. It was like. However, yes, they took a lot of liberties. They kind of added a Stephen King twist to kind it. Kind of a spiritual. Which I hate. Spiritual. I mean, I love Stephen thing. King books. Love Stephen King books. But here's what I hate about Stephen King books. It's a regular story, regular story, regular Somewhat story. Plausible. Yes, and then we're going to add some aliens or some crap in it that makes it completely unbelievable. Well, that's what they did in season four. They have these voices. All of a sudden, you hear these... It's like spirits or yeah. whatever. Yes, which is like completely uh, wackadoodle. And so it kind of ruins the whole true yeah. detective Stop. part of it. Yeah. You know, Stop. like behind you. Yeah. <laughs> and, and you're like and you're like yeah where is it, that it's coming just from? like yeah it, there, there were it's certain weird. elements in it um, that, like i said that part i didn't like but the story itself i actually enjoyed the story the story was a good story yeah. but they shouldn't have added they had that these, spiritualist version yes yeah this i think it's supposed to be like uh adding the uh, that that spiritualness of that community you know i think that's what they're talking about well it it it, it, it did nothing for me. Yeah, I didn't uh, enjoy at that all. Part. I did not enjoy no. that part of it. That was the part of it that made this one of, not one of my favorites. No, not at all. Because it's not my least favorite. Part. Yeah, because it's like it's it, third. Yeah, it's like you're watching a ghost story or something. Yeah. If you don't believe in ghosts and you don't believe in all these, and some of the it really tied into the story too. Because some of the things that happened in the story wouldn't have happened if that wasn't part of it. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It was completely unrealistic. Yeah. yeah. So, like, the first season, the first Unless season, you in stuff like that. if you believe <laughs> in that stuff, um, um, the, the first season of True Detective was truly, uh, that should have set the standard for all of them because it was the best for me. Mm -hmm. that, was, that was by far my favorite season. And the first one was my favorite. It was very realistic. Everything could have happened. It was very true to life. Mm -hmm. I wish the other seasons had followed that. The third one was the good. The third one was pretty good. The third one is my second favorite. Yeah, it's so, same for me. So season one and then season three. And if you're looking for a kind of a ghost story, kind of UFO spooky deal, then you could go for four. season four. Four that, would be number three. Right. And then the second one would be my last. Yes, I agree completely. Yeah. Yeah. So it was I, still worth watching. It's just the the fourth one kind of got hokey, and the second one was confusing. There's enough. It got stuff. better in the second season once you watched it. Towards the end, it got much better. But the, the ending was my favorite part of it. Yeah, and I but know that first, sounds funny, but it was. the first two or three episodes, you're like, what's going on? What's go you just have to keep watching. <laughs> you just have to keep watching. It's like watching Billions or something. It's like, all this is way over my head, but I'm just going to keep on <laughs> watching. You just, hey, something will come yeah. out of this. Back when we were watching it, uh, Billions. Uh, so that's good. When they come out with the fifth season, of course, we'll watch it. Oh, definitely it. watch it. Uh, we'll definitely watch it. But I hope whatever they're doing for the fifth season, I hope it goes back closer to what they did in the first season. Because all this hokey stuff, it's just, that's that's not true detective. That's fairy tales and, you know, stuff like that. I just don't think that's what it should be. Um, okay. I watched this one by myself. It was on Max. It's called They Call Him Mostly Harmless. Weird name. Uh, this is a 2024. It is a, um, it's a documentary. It's real life documentary. A hiker found dead in Florida wilderness is identified by internet sleuths 
after two years. His identity triggers more questions as multiple hikers claim to have met him, but he never revealed his name. Hmm. So it's amazing to me that all these people, there are groups of people who do this like, like this is their thing. They hear about these unsolved murder mysteries and it's it would be like Kevin or I behind our computer doing the, the, the work, research the and research stuff. and stuff to find out who this is. And I mean, it's shocking that these people really do get results. And so that's exactly what happened in this case is you have people, these groups of people, they have groups on Facebook and stuff solving these unsolved mysteries. And um, what I found interesting from this was apparently there's lots of people that walk these trails that like they're going to walk long trails and they camp out and they do this like this is part of their life. Mm -hmm. They have names on the trails. Like someone would give you a name, like Graybeard or Whitebeard or, you know, whatever. And you, they, you would not call him Kevin. So that surprised me. Everybody's got a trail name that's usually like given to them. Yes. And then, too, you've got these people who are called trail angels. So trail angels are people who they don't actually walk the trail. But they know that people are walking the trails. So for me, like I know if I've got a trail near my house and I know hiker trail people are going to be hiking by my house every day, I could take them water or right. leave them water or leave them snacks or stuff like that. They refer to those people as trail angels. And then also there are Facebook trail pages. All this was totally new to me. I knew nothing about this. But stuff. we remember when we went over to Scotland, there were places that there was like a very famous trail that people would walk. They talked about while we were over there. Of course, we were like, blah, blah, blah. Are you so, talking about with the, it's a trail, the wall? Blah, blah, blah. The wall? No, no, no. There was a trail in Scotland where, where we went to the town where it ended. And they said, this is really busy here because this is where that trail ends. Right. And it was over highlands and mountains. And I mean, it was all through Scotland is this trail. Hadron's Wall? That's Hadron's Wall. Oh. That's not a trail. Though. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. this is actually a trail like, through the mountains oh. that people walk. Yeah, apparently that went right over my head. And I didn't realize that people actually do this like... Yeah, like this takes like month to walk yeah i didn't know that people actually did this yeah. and like camped out mm -hmm. um yeah when well, you're taking a month-long hike basically well it's like okay are these all retired people because they no. can't where, where, how are they getting maybe money? they're getting sponsorships okay because i'm thinking the whole time i'm thinking who has money or maybe they're taking this? a month off to tie for vacation yeah. exactly because i'm just thinking how do people have money you need money you need money to live so how in the world do you have money just to, I'm just going to take off a month from Walmart and go walk, walk on this you probably trail. wouldn't from Walmart, but you would from your... It's like, where how where are these people working for they? Yeah. I, I don't know people who have time for this. Mm -hmm. So I learned might, a lot of things. I think they, some people walk sections of it too. Right. So and you don't walk the whole thing, they'll walk a section of it, then they'll walk... Another right. Of it. Yeah. It's the challenge just, is to walk the whole length. It's a whole new world yeah. for me. That was interesting. And it, it was very interesting. Yes. Um, we both watched a Wonka uh, 2024. Mm -hmm. You can rent it on Prime or you can see this in the theater. Um, I'm surprised that's still in the theater. Yeah. Uh, Timothy Chalamet uh, with dreams of opening a shop in a city renowned for its chocolate. A young and poor Willy Wonka discovers that the industry is run by a cartel of greedy chocolatiers. Yeah. So this is before the old Willy Wonka. Yes. This took place before he had his factory. This is pre-factory. Mm -hmm. um, it wasn't bad. For me, yeah. I enjoyed it. It was a one time. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the music. I enjoyed the, the songs and stuff like that. But it was a one-time movie. Yeah. And that's why I said when we were talking about The Beekeeper, if you could see one of those two movies in the theater, either the, second time. the Beekeeper or Wonka, I would go see The Beekeeper because I like an action movie. Yeah, that's true. But now if you have kids, you'll probably want to go see Wonka. Yeah, even they'd probably only want to see it once. <laughs> yes. Um, it seems like... Uh, yeah, Andrew had said that he liked the original, but to see Andrew grew up with that. The Gene Wilder, that's who Andrew grew well, up with. Well, more was going on during the, the old one, too. 
It was very different. It was very colorful, and and there was a couple of colorful scenes in the in the new one, but but mm -hmm. but only I a liked, few. Uh, yeah, I, liked, I liked the new one, and there's a lot of recognizable faces. Um, oh, yeah. in the new one and so i liked it i just would rather go see an action movie than go see that right. again yeah rent it don't don't yeah don't spend the big money in theaters exactly so then this one is gonna sound completely out of left field and it is we watched encino man encino man is from 1992 you can rent it on prime video uh it's Polly shore brendan frazier and sean astin uh, when they find a frozen caveman in their backyard, two high school's outcasts thaw him and introduce him to modern life while he, uh, while he in turn gets them to actually enjoy life. Now, let me tell you why we watched this. I had never seen it before. Never seen this movie. We, this is very random. We were in a store in Lexington that has all these like craft beers they had a craft beer called Wheezing the Juice. And it had a little picture of two, people. two people on the can. I didn't have a clue. I just thought it was a weird name. Kevin That's thought, the I pointed it yes, out. Yes, Kevin pointed it out, Wheezing the Juice. So I took a picture of it and I posted it on Instagram. And I, cause I thought that was a funny name. Somebody in the comments of that picture said, oh, Encino Man, or something like that. And I was like, what, what? the heck? <laughs> this is from a, this wheezing the juice is from some movie that I didn't know about. So I wanted to watch Encino Man because I had to find out what exactly that is meant. wheezing the juice. And so if you see Encino Man, you'll find out. I'm not going to give it away. But you tell I think it's a, I, I think, I've never done it. Before. I mean, I would like to do that. I mean, it would be fun to do, but we can't tell you what it is. Um, I it, it, that's a movie that honestly you could skip forever in your life. Okay. It, it was okay one time, it was okay for a 90s movie. It's one of those movies where it is not going to hurt you to sit down for an hour and a half. No, it's, it's short, okay. it's predictable, it's very predictable. It, it's, it's okay, you know. Yeah, there's not nothing bad. wrong with it, and then it's just you, cheesy. You have Polly Shore talking his, you know, oh, talking Shore. the way he talks. Drives me crazy. And, um, it's hey, funny listen. to see Samwise as a young kid. Yes, and he's in the Connors. In case you all don't know, Sean Astin is in the Connors. Completely different. He was different. in Lord of the Rings too. Yeah, he was in yeah, Lord same. of the Rings too. Uh, but Polly Shore is going to be in a uh, like a mini series or something or a short movie called. It's about Richard Simmons. Oh, he plays Richard Simmons. He looks like freaking Richard Simmons. Yeah. I can't wait to I, see it. They picked the perfect actor for him. I, yes. He looks just like Richard Simmons. And I, I just, I, they couldn't have picked any better. Yeah. Well, and Cino Man was your, honestly, I would have guessed it was in the 80s. Because mm. it's like your typical and it's 80s 92. movie. But it was 90s. So it's still kind of like an 80s movie. Yeah. Well, think about it. I graduated kinda in cheesy. 90. Yeah. So this was two years it's after. It's kind of a that. cheesy movie. Okay. Then, um, the truth. Oh, I watched this by myself. The Truth About Jim. It's 2024. It's a four episode documentary on um, a mini series on Max. And it is a woman trying to find out if the man she knew, it's someone in her family, if he was a notorious uh, serial killer. It is, um, it, it, first of all, I, I'm going to warn you that if you are easily bothered by uh, rape, then I wouldn't watch it. It doesn't show anything like that. But you know what's going on. But well, no, it doesn't show anything. But they talk a lot about uh, these. So if you're triggered by that, yeah. yeah. If this, the, these experiences. I got you. So like this man's name was Jim. He was actually a school teacher, and apparently, um, he was just a horrible, horrible person, and he took advantage of a lot of young girls mm. that just you know did not know any better, but. Uh, somebody in the family is trying to find out if he's also a, 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 a killer. And it's basically, it's all speculation. It, it truly is. It, so there's no proof in any of no, it. It's just somebody talking. It's all speculation. Um, it was interesting to me. Um, 
there is one thing during the series I won't give anything away but there's a box if they had been, if you do watch the mini series if they had kept that box and somebody had done something with that box then you would have known for sure but that box was discarded so you don't know anything so it's a lot of speculation uh but basically you're watching a documentary about a horrible human being hmm. um that you would like to have castrated um so okay happy happy <laughs> we don't have to be more maryland maryland was three episodes it has i don't know how to pronounce her name saran jones she was in dr foster scott and bailey and Anne Marie O'Connor, their two sisters, their mom has died. Uh, you find out at the very beginning, these two sisters, they live in two completely different places. They don't see each other a lot. They live on the Isle of Man. And their mom dies, and so they come together on the Isle of Man. And that's where the mom died at. That's they don't where the live, mom died. They don't live on the no, Isle of Man. No, one lives in London. One lives, I don't remember. Yeah, somewhere. Manchester but, or something. Yeah, yeah, you just don't know. Uh, well, I, you know, I don't, but I don't remember. And they find out that there's a lot of... Um, she's basically had a secret life. She's had a secret life, the mom. And so you're finding out about mm -hmm. this secret life. And it, it was interesting. It was interesting. It wasn't like... I mean, it's not going to, it's not mind blowing or anything like that. It's just, a, it's a story. It's just a story that took place over a few days and you're getting to hear about the lives of people of that, those few days. That's yeah. It. So it's not like it's high drama or anything no. like that. Just a story. It was just interesting. Yeah. It was interesting. It was, um, and it's short too. It wasn't very many episodes either. So it's not like you're watching you know, weeks and weeks and weeks of it. Just, right. You can knock it out in a day or two, probably. Um, this one I watched with the grandkids. So Kevin was playing, you were playing a game with Andrew, mm -hmm. and I watched uh, the Spiderwick Chronicles. Uh, and I may have seen that a long time ago, but I don't, it's I don't from, remember. I don't, I don't think you I don't, might. I don't, may not have. It's from 2008. Yeah. 2008 Prime Video um, is where you can uh, watch it. Upon moving, uh, Upon moving into the rundown Spiderwick estate with their mother, twin brothers Jared and Simon Grace, along with their sister Mallory, find themselves pulled into an alternate world full of fairies and other creatures. We loved this. Um, Gavin, Gavin was sitting there. Gavin's 10 years old. Um, apparently, there's a whole book series. Mm -hmm. I've never read it. Gavin's never read it. Um, you know, somehow we missed this. I don't even know what reading level it is. And Gavin said, this is such a cool movie, Nanny. So he was so happy with it. So I looked into it and I said, well, there's a book series. And so he has now, since watching that, he has gone to our local library and checked out like the first, the first two, two books. Yeah. And um, I also found out when I was looking up the, the date and stuff like this for this video, and they are coming out. When's it going to be? Was it April or May? It wasn't or? too far away. They're coming out with a whole series. Um, what? Hulu? No. Uh, I wish Roku. You would, uh, Roku. That was it. I wish you'd break your phone it's in It's Roku. Roku. Roku is doing a whole series. Uh, they're going to have episodes. Like eight episodes, I think is what it's going to be. Eight episodes. The Spiderwick Chronicles. And Christian Slater is is gonna play in that. I love Christian Slater. Crazy about him. I've always loved him. I I like. I just think he's awesome, and I cannot believe he's gonna be in this because I haven't seen him in anything. It seems like in forever. And um, I uh, I remember just back in the. Um, late 80s 90s watching a lot of stuff with him in it and at, he just it, i really like him so i can't wait i want to see hopefully they do a good job every single episode i'm sure they will yeah. uh, but that is an awesome movie it's very family friendly it's funny because i was telling my sister i said you need to watch the spider Wick chronicles and I said, you know, it's way over Loretta's head, her granddaughter, she's two. I said, but I think you and John would like it. And she said, you're going to be surprised. She said, John and I watched it, and John loves that movie. John absolutely loved it. And I said, I understand why, because it's so good. Um, so then, that same night after we watched the Spiderwick Chronicles, 
Kevin got off the game with Andrew, and we all decided to watch Gremlins. Gremlins is from 1984. You can rent it on Prime Video. It's a young man inadvertently breaks three important rules concerning his new pet. So the, this kid, well, he's not a kid, he's a teenager. Honestly, he looks like he's about 20. I know, he's working at a bank. I, I mean, wonder how old, yeah. Uh, it's, and it's the son, but I swear it looks, I wonder they're how They're making him out to be like this young, like he's fresh, he's still in high school, 16 I know, he's year working old, at a bank. But it, yeah, he looks like he's in his mid 20s. <laughs> So the but he's still living at home, so. So the dad goes to like Chinatown or something, and he mm -hmm. gets this this little pet, this little gizmo gremlin, real cute. Well, I don't think it's that cute, but Amelia thought it was adorable. Oh, it's so cute. Kind of looks, looks like a Furby. Um, so she thought it was cute. So he gets this this little animal, and there's three rules. You you can't get it wet. Get it wet. Feed it at night. You can't feed it after midnight. Right. And um, sunlight. Yeah, it does not like light. So even like the flash of a camera, which well, I'm doing this, but we don't do this anymore. Uh, <laughs> you take push buttons, take pictures still. That's true, but it usually doesn't go. Pew, yeah, you know, don't have like, a flashlight. Um, I don't know. Those phone flashlights are pretty bright. So certain things happen. Certain things happen when it blows up. Yeah, when you do that, and so the movie's rated PG. Uh, um, it's for um, I would say. Um, I won't say cartoon violence. I'm gonna say puppet violence because <laughs> they're little puppets, but mm -hmm. but it's kind of graphic. <laughs> yeah, you need to know they don't. Okay, there's blood, but it's not red. It's green. Yeah, it's creature it's, blood. It's creature blood, so it's green. But you need to know that's in there because yeah. I had forgotten. Yeah, and and the it's kind of got a couple of disturbing like visuals. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. yeah. so. Yeah, don't let your young children watch it. But they didn't have nightmares that night. Well, they we were fine. We, yeah, they might. As far later as on. I know, they were they were fine. They were nice. Yeah. They and me, it was like. Ah! <laughs> yeah, she, she was, needed to cover her. She face. was covering my glasses. Don't watch. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, okay. Then we watched Lover Stalker Killer. 2024 Netflix documentary. Instead of being this being a mini series, it's a whole hour and 30 minutes. It's yep. a one time, one and done thing, an hour and 30 minutes. You watch it. Um, in this twisting documentary, a mechanic tries online dating for the first time and meets a woman who takes romantic obsession to a deadly extreme. It, it's supposed to be twisted. You know, there's supposed to be a twist and stuff in it. Tammy had it figured out early. I knew. It, it was pretty, honestly, it was pretty self-explanatory after a few, I knew. few pieces yeah. of information come in. You're like, oh, that's what happened. Yeah, they weren't going to get that one over yeah. on me. But it, it was, was interesting. It was though. interesting. And it's a true story. I mean, yeah, it's, it's a true it's, story. It's, what's interesting about it is that the lengths that some people will go to be crazy. I mean, like, literally, that's what it was. Yeah. <laughs> it was just like, wow. Yeah. So... It's more interesting for that fact, not that it, that you know what necessarily is going on. It's just how crazy you, you know. And can it's be. it's literally it, it's somebody that clearly doesn't have a lot going on to where they can focus their attention in the wrong way, mm -hmm. and so that's why we go back to the trail people. These people that that. Um, uh, for one reason or another, maybe they do work. A lot of these people do work full-time jobs. They have and to to be able to support they, that. They do. They, they work. No, no, no. I'm talking about the people who are solving these unsolved oh, mysteries, yeah, like yeah. the trail hiker. Yeah. Um, these people work full-time jobs, and they'll come home, and maybe they don't have kids, or maybe they don't have a husband or something, and they have that time to devote to these uh, cases to find out answers. I wish people like this woman in Lover, Stalker, Killer, instead of her using all this time for craziness and doing crazy things, imagine if she had taken that energy and put it on something that positive. That could be said a lot of things, though. Like helping somebody. That could be said about all kinds. You know, do something <laughs> positive with yeah. all that time you have. That, and, uh, that, you know. That could be. Um... You know, half the population could probably be. Yeah, like you've got all this time and you're sitting, you're doing nothing. Well, you could be doing so many positive things. So anyway, yeah, that was that was really interesting hour and a half. And then we're watching 
We're we're on the last season of Are You Been Sorry? Probably the last few episodes. Yeah, Probably it's the last, the last few that. episodes. I if you've ever and now we haven't finished. We do still have a few more episodes, and I might end up saying the last episode is my favorite episode. But two episodes stand out to me so far in the whole series that were my favorite of Are You Being Served. It's a British uh, series. It's, Back in like very early eighties. Yeah, uh, the uh, the first one, uh, one of them that was my favorite was when they all had to work in the toy department. Oh, they brought the toy department of that. They yeah, brought, yeah, yeah. They all no, worked, you're right. They, they, went to they the all department. worked in the toy department. Yeah. My second favorite one was where there was like, I think it was like a big snowstorm or something. So they all had to sleep in the store. And Mrs. Slocum, had, she was pretending that like this floor was, was her, her apartment. Because she had been put out of her apartment. She had been put out of her apartment. Yeah, it was, it was because of a storm. Yeah. So there's the, there's like a furniture department in the store, and I love that. But I, I don't know. See, one I, of my favorites was when um, something happened. She got hit on the head or something, and she uh, thought she was a little girl again. Oh, really? That, I love that. That's hilarious. There's a woman. I didn't keep it up on my phone. Um, a lot of times I'll keep pages up on my phone. We're watching in this season 10, there is a blonde woman who the is, is the secretary, and she's real attractive. But they uh, put her in skimpier every episode. Oh, that, her her uh, neckline gets lower and lower. Every and episode, there's more and more showing. I guess to keep people watching the show, which you know, if you've watched it for ten years. But anyway, I looked her up, and I found out that she was like a Miss Nude mm -hmm. and, in the eighties. And like she won. Or she won, and she's also an author. She's she's died now. But she wrote like detective mysteries mm -hmm. and she goes under a certain name and I thought you would never know that. Yeah. You would just never think that from seeing her as this like this ditzy blonde this, in the show. Yeah, I was gonna say busty blonde. Busty ditzy. Yeah, busty <laughs> blonde and but I mean she's she is really attractive. Mm -hmm. But I just thought that was so interesting that, interesting. that she was a writer. Um and then we're also watching The Connors, yeah, which is been a few episodes the now. offshoot of Roseanne, they renamed it. Uh, we're also watching Young Sheldon, which I still dearly love. Um, and then tonight, uh, Survivor Starts. Survivor starts. Nope. The night that we are filming this, uh, uh, Survivor Starts. We're watching the Traders U.S. We're still watching the Traders U.S. And it ticked us off because they cliff hung, hang. They did a really bad cliffhanger. It wasn't even a. Uh, we're going to tease you a little bit. Okay, they just so, like absolutely stopped. So before. this video comes out Thursday morning. You said the Traders comes on Thursday night. Yes. So they left a cliffhanger, so we don't know who got voted out. Right. But, the management table. Right. So we'll you'll find out that tonight when you see this, we'll all find out. I do not like how they're doing... Uh, this series. They are, I think they are the uh, producer, maybe that's the wrong word, producers, directors, yeah. whoever's in charge. They're manipulating things very, very heavily the way that they want this to go. They are lording over this show and things aren't happening the way they would organically because they are changing things up so that certain things won't happen. And I say that because they would have gotten rid of traitors like that. But instead, one night, it was supposed to be a banishment night. And if you watch the UK version, the American version follows that one perfectly. Like we do all basically the same stuff on the same night at the same time. That, the night... There same, was, same castle and everything. Same I mean, it's ca the same place. It's, yes, it's the same castle. It's just a different host. It's not that guy that with the cupid doll hair. It's it's a woman, which I we like her better anyway. But there was supposed to be a banishment. That night, they would have gotten rid of who that night? Janelle? They would have... Uh, was it Janelle that they... Um, I can't remember. It would have been somebody. Anyway, no, they... would have been Janelle. It was Poverty. Poverty. Yeah. They would have gotten rid of poverty that night. And, um, poverty. or poverty. Poverty. Not poverty. It's poverty. Not, <laughs> it's not poverty? No, it's poverty. It's poverty. Anyway. Anyway, they would have gotten rid of her. And they decided, the director, producer, whoever does that, the said, the, person. Yeah, said, we're not going to have a banishment tonight. So that. Instead, is, we're going to do this torch thing. 
Yeah. Which so, they did not do in the UK at all. No, that never happened. But I told Tammy, I said, I don't know that it's necessarily them manipulating things or if certain things occur, they've got certain things that happen that they, they're going to, they do. So if you get down to like, there's two traders and this happens, then we do this. And if this happens, we're going to do this. If we get down to one, this is going to happen. I wonder if that's the, I think, it's like a flow chart. I think they make sure that you don't get down to where the There's game no just ends because then the TV show would end. Yeah. Because think they about it. They couldn't get rid of all the traders because then it would be like, well, they could because then the, the, the faithful don't know. And right. They're still voting each other but out. But the faithful win. But if they're the automatically going to win the money. They, all, yeah. they automatically win, so the show's over. Yeah. But I'm just saying that woman, uh, I can't, Phaedra? Yeah. Phaedra, they basically told Phaedra, you have to pick somebody or, uh, and if that person doesn't join you, that person goes home. Yeah, but they've done that before. They have done that before, but that's another way of them being the puppet masters yeah. because they know. I mean, I think that's just the game rule. They know that that, that person's not going to say, oh, well, I don't want to be a traitor, so I'm just going to go home. Yeah, they're not going to quit. They're not going to quit the game. But they're put in a, loca a situation where they have to. They're forced to be a traitor whether they wanted to be or not. So I just, I don't know. I do think it is. I think this was definitely more overproduced than the I UK I think they are is. manipulating the situation more than they did in the UK or New Zealand or the other ones that we've watched. I think this American version, because I think the people have gotten smart and I think the traitors would have been gone yeah. and I think the show would have been over and they know we have to get 20 episodes or something ridiculous out of this. And well, um, I think their their biggest mistake with the US version is they pick celebrities. Yeah, I don't I yeah, that's why their do biggest that? mistake because I don't agree with that either. Some of these celebrities already know each other. Mm -hmm. Like this year, there's uh the they have like four, four or five people from the Bravo. From Bravo, network. from the So Royal they've Housewives. all kind of been together mm -hmm. and they say, well, I'm not here to vote for Bravo, but they kind of do though. Yes, they do. So, they all side together. So uh, they may not mean to, but they do. They do. If they got complete strangers, random people uh, doing this show, you wouldn't have that teaming up from previous. Right. And just like Phaedra, Phaedra and that other girl are like best buddies. Yeah, they're never going to vote And they're never going to vote for each other. Yeah. Never. So they shouldn't have both been on that show. Yeah, yeah I agree. It they, should they not should be, be just celebrities. regular people off the street. Yeah. Plus, I mean, I know they're kind of, well, they're more celebrity than we are, uh, but we'll call them B celebrities. Um, they, um, we're my life on the D list, okay? Yeah, we're Kathy I mean, Griffin. But I mean, uh, but you see what I'm saying? They're 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 B list celebrities. Yeah. They don't necessarily need two hundred fifty thousand dollars. No. But give that to somebody off the street that Who can really impact it. their yeah. life. You know, that's yeah. got two kids and and single mom or dad. You know, yeah. Give it to those people the opportunity to, to win it, not some celebrity that's already making millions of dollars. Yeah. Give me a freaking break. Well, and what's funny is I think it's funny that they think the American public has to see celebrities before they watch. Before they watch, uh, which that may be true. I don't know. What's funny <laughs> is uh, Tamra Tamra Judge has a podcast, and she was on Bravo. She was one of the people. And so every week she talks about the traders on her podcast and the way Janelle was on there like two weeks in a row, maybe even more, three weeks in a row. And then they had that other girl, Sandra from, from a survivor. Yeah, right She's right. been on there. I haven't, I haven't listened to her. Um, but they made it sound like once you're in with this game show loop, you'll be invited if they like you you'll be invited to do all the game show loops yeah. so like janelle janelle has done big brother she's done the traders i think she did uh did she do amazing race seems it, like it with her sister or but, friend or something. but a lot of these people you see them over and over again they're game people is what the bravo yes, people call yes yeah they, they're game people and so you'll see them on a bunch of different shows now the challenge we never watched that show no evidently that's one that they've been on so yeah they just it's like you're right they they're really, on the game circuit <laughs> yeah and they really don't need they don't need the money i don't think um is is you're right as much as like a, somebody off the street and so i do wish they would have real people mm -hmm. and and no and two i feel like a lot of these people are just acting all the time it's like I'm, i don't want to point anybody out 
But some people, just the way they talk and the way they act, it's like, surely to God, you don't act that way in your own home. Well, they're not good actors. No. <laughs> no, we're talking about the same person. Yeah. They're, they're acting, but they're not very good at it's it, like, so it seems very hokey. Yeah, you, you know that you don't really talk like that all the time in your real life. And the way that you're acting and like that, I would rather watch real people... Who, and how they interact with each other. And Complete how, strangers yes. that interact with each other. Yeah, instead of all this. And uh, and it works on all the other networks. Every other network around the world that does the traders has um, regular people. And guess what? They, they put on their own makeup and their own hair. And they wear regular clothes. They don't have these... Sparkly outfits for every single yeah. day. It's just absolutely ridiculous. They, yeah, they wear regular clothes that regular people wear. That's one of the things my dad, my dad, absolutely, he and his wife, um, they love the uh, UK shows. And we talk about them constantly. He's always telling me, well, we're watching Scott and Bailey. That's how we found out about Scott and Bailey. And I'll say, okay, you need to watch uh, this one. And so he's been watching one. And he said one of the things that he loves about it is these are real people. They don't um, they don't have a lot of the Botox and stuff like that. Um, he is watching Happy Valley. That's what and we watched it a long time ago. I thought he'd already watched it. No, he and Laura have been watching Happy no. Valley. The first season was really good. Loving it. Um, but that's the thing about them is they don't do a lot of the Botox and the fillers. I mean, they and do, the, but not as many. You, you just, they look like real people. And so he loves that about it. And that's what I love about them too. And so watching the traders over in the UK and other areas, it's like, these are real people, you know? And so, um, I, I've watched it and I'll continue to watch it because I want to see how it ends up. But I'm honestly not enjoying this as much as I've enjoyed other seasons. Yeah, that's true. So, with other countries. With other countries, absolutely. So you might be enjoying it because you, I think you probably wouldn't realize that. Or maybe that doesn't bother you, but it just bothers me. Um, but as always, if you're watching anything interesting, let us know in the comments below. I know I get things, some things recommended to me that I've mentioned a while back that I've already watched. And I tried to tell people, yes, I watched that and it was good. Or, or maybe it just doesn't sound interesting. But it, maybe it doesn't sound interesting to me. Not everything is interesting to me that's interesting to you all. And that's okay. But I love when you leave me comments because other people read those comments and they're looking for shows too so just because i'm not interested might not mean 10 other people are, are going to love whatever show you're watching so please let us know what you're watching below and i hope you enjoyed the video and we'll see you at the end of march